Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. So today what I'd like to do is I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about a very important station and a station that can sometimes be associated with a fair, fairly high degree of uh, failure regarding paramedics that negotiate the National Registry psychomotor uh, testing experience, and that is the uh, cardiology skills stations. And the cardiology skill station, rather, is, is a station that consists of two individual stations combined into it to one experience. And these include the static cardiology and the dynamic cardiology. And over the course of the next couple of videos, I would like to spend some time focusing on the static cardiology component of the cardiac uh, skill stations for the paramedic psychomotor testing experience uh, is, as it applies to the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. So let's go ahead and just uh, do a quick rundown of what's involved in the static cardiology station. So in the static cardiology station, What's going to happen is you're going to be confronted with uh, four different scenarios, and you're going to be given a short, a short written scenario, so there will be some basic information about a paragraph, and then associated with that basic information will be either one of two things. There will either be a rhythm strip. All right, so a six-second strip, or you may also encounter a 12-lead ECG. And more or less, you can expect to encounter at least one 12-lead ECG in your static cardiology experience. So uh, typically what we're finding is we'll, we'll, we're finding students are going to have uh, three rhythm strips, and at least one 12 lead ECG. So you'll have uh, four total scenarios that you will read that'll be associated with either a rhythm strip or a 12 lead. So the way that this particular station is gonna work out is that you will have a total of six minutes so you are going to definitely be on a time limit here you're gonna have a total of six minutes to read each of the scenarios so you're gonna read the scenario you are gonna analyze the rhythm strip or the 12 lead and then you are going to verbalize two things. The first thing that you're going to verbalize is your interpretation. Your interpretation of the strip slash 12 lead. And then the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to verbalize your treatment. What you plan to do about that. And the way that this works is each scenario is going to be worth a total of three points. You're going to get one point for the interpretation and up to two points for the treatment. And to make matters more stressful, if you happen to fail your interpretation, you get zero points for the entire experience. So if you misinterpret a rhythm, you will get zero points for the entire scenario even if you identify the appropriate uh, treatment. And it, the way that it works is each of these scenarios will be worth three points. So you'll have a total of 12 points maximum. And you have to, at a bare minimum, you would have to get all of the points for three 
of those scenarios or strips. Right? So if you you can misinterpret one completely and get zero points on uh, one of the strips, and you will still manage to pass this station or this uh, section of the cardiology skills station, provided that you can get the maximum amount of points for every other strip, so the other three. Um, ideally, what you'd want to do is you'd want to in correctly interpret every ECG and then um, if you're going to lose points, it would be better to lose points down in the uh, treatment. Um, and as long as you don't do anything inherently harmful um, to the, the patient or, or, or uh, severe acts of commission or omission, um, you'll at least be able to get you know, one uh, point out of the, the two points for your treatment. So it's, it's really critical when negotiating this scenario. It's really critical to get the appropriate interpretation first and then at least get the appropriate basic treatment. Uh, and we're going to talk about this in a little more detail here in, um, in subsequent videos, but that's just kind of the rundown. So the, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to get four sheets of paper thrown in front of you. Your proctor is going to give you a quick introduction to the station. And they'll ask you when you, if you're ready to begin. You will begin, and you can flip. You will flip over the four pieces of paper, and those pieces of paper will have a scenario and a rhythm stripper 12 lead. And you will read the scenario. You'll look at the rhythm stripper 12 lead, and then you will verbalize your interpretation and your treatment. And you'll do that for each of those four um, sheets of paper and you'll have a total of six minutes. And if you do not complete the station in six minutes, the proctor will um, stop you and thank you for being involved in this scenario and uh, send you on your way or will um, prompt you to transition to the dynamic cardiology experience. Typically, the static cardiology experience is done first and then you will transition or move into the dynamic cardiology portion of the cardiac skills station following that. Okay, so that's the way it works. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that it's good or it's bad that or, or that I necessarily agree with it because as we well know, um, if a patient presents with a sinus bradycardia at a rate of 20 and they're pale and they're lethargic and they're diaphoretic and they're having ischemic chest pain, um, they're having difficulty breathing, etc. Um, and they, and then you take that same person, or you take a different person, and give them a third degree heart block with the exact same signs and symptoms. Um, it doesn't really matter from a treatment perspective if they're in a third degree heart block, or if they're in a sinus bradycardia. Um, if their signs and symptoms suggest that uh, it is a bradycardic dysrhythmia that is causing the problems, our treatment is going to essentially be the same for, for in both cases, right? We're going to start with our supportive care. We're going to administer atropine. If atropine doesn't work, then we'll have a choice of either pacing, um, transitioning to an epinephrine infusion, or transitioning to a dopamine infusion, um, using a dose uh, that is appropriate for beta-1 effects in, 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 both, in both cases. Unfortunately, National Registry says that you have to get the interpretation correct even if the treatment is the same. It is what it is, and so that's what we have to deal with uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with this uh, particular uh, station or uh, substation of the cardiac skill station. So hopefully this introduction to uh, static cardiology is, uh, is helpful and gives you at least some idea of what to expect. And then in subsequent videos, we will go into the nuance of the static cardiology station. And I'll give you guys some tips, hints, and suggestions uh, as you move forward and look at preparing and studying and getting ready for the station. All right, guys. Um, as always, thanks for hanging in there.